The project for today is a shaker gift bag. I'm featuring stitched and layered Christmas tree die by Cat Scrappiness. It cuts out a bunch of stitched shapes that you can um, layer and stick to your card front to create a dimensional tree. The small shapes can be used as ornaments. That's what this die is meant to do, but I'm going to use it a little bit differently this time and make a shaker window gift bag. To create a bag template, I'm using an A4 sheet of white cardstock and um, a gift bag punch board by We Are Memory Keepers. This board makes three standard size bags, S, M and L, and for this project we'll need an L size. I'm just following the, extra, the instructions to create it. Now I'm positioning a trunk and a tree dies to the front of my bag and die cutting them. I'm using Grand Caliber machine and it has a large cutting plate enough to position an A4 cardstock. If your cutting plates are smaller, you'll simply have to fold the flaps up and then run them through the machine like that. So now I have a, a nice shake of window. As I happened to run out of acetate, I wondered if I can use a packaging bag from my memory box dies to make a clear window. And I have to tell you that they are totally suitable for this purpose. I just have to trim them to the size that I need. I'm attaching a sheet of plastic at the back side of the bag. Next, I'm applying some adhesive again. I'll not be using any mounting tape, just a regular double-sided adhesive. I'm putting the sequins on top of the window, making sure they don't get over the adhesive. I won't need a lot of sequins because I don't want extra bulk. I'll be using mulberry paper as a backdrop for my shaker element. I'm just putting it over the sequence and pressing it down. Now I'm going to use some scotch tape to completely cover the whole backdrop piece and even create a border of tape around it. This will make uh, the shaker pocket really secure and trap the sequins inside. Also, when you are pulling the gift out of the bag, you are not going to rip a shaker pocket. I've also die cut a bunch of those small embellishments and I'll use them to create a textured background on the front of my bag. I'm gluing them down to the front randomly. It's as simple as that. Now I'm going to assemble the bag. First I have to fold all the scored lines. Then I'm applying adhesive to the vertical flap and sticking it down like this. After that, I'm adding adhesive to the three bottom flaps, leaving one of the larger flaps clean. I'm curling the flaps inside, the one with no adhesive on it is going on top, and uh, then uh, I'll be pressing them down. To make a tag, I'm using this uh, Joy Tag die by Poppy Stamps and a matching background. I'll use the same white cardstock and mulberry paper. Notice that I only applied glue to the frame and not to the sentiment. I will also add a lacy ribbon to the tag. This small tag is to write a name of the recipient on. 
I'm tying the two tags together and now they are ready to be added to the bag. I will use two mini clothes pins to hold tags and to keep the bag closed. And here is the tip. This tag can also be used as a money holder, especially if this is going to be a treat bag for children or for Christmas carolers. And of course you can make those bags any colors that you like. Here I used craft cardstock and some foiled papers and various sequins. You can find the links to all the sequin mixes on my blog and on Cat Scrappiness blog. These patterned paper backgrounds are the masculine version of this bag. And this is the original bag. So here are the close-up pictures of the project.